Jamie Dimon has basically become an institution at this point. He has led JP Morgan for about two decades and made himself billions of dollars in the process. He's always been known as the man who is unshakable, who remains calm and guides his firm through any problems no matter how grave, including the 2008 great financial crisis. But over the last year, things have changed and Dimon has well and truly been shaken. He's been sounding the alarm bells himself, screaming to all that will hear him that the recession is on a one-way trip down into what he himself called an economic hurricane. But over the last couple of months, things have gotten even worse and Diamond is now convinced that not only is the economy on the brink, but so is the entire banking sector. He's been doing the round, spreading fear, and many are trying to downplay what he's saying. The mainstream media is trying to pretend actually that nothing is wrong at all, but the truth is very different. And if you want to protect your wealth and no stocks aren't the place, watch out for this video sponsor, Vaulted. Almost a year ago now, Diamond was interviewed and he made this now infamous statement. It's a hurricane. It's, we, right now, it's kind of sunny. Things are doing fine. You know, everyone thinks the, the Fed can handle this. That hurricane is right out there down the road coming our way. We just don't know if it's a minor one or Superstorm Sandy or uh, yeah, Sandy or, or uh, Andrew or something like that. And it's, you, you better brace yourself. It's probably safe to say that he wasn't too excited at the state of the economy then and his words did not end there. He stated that JP Morgan was pricing in a recession, that the Fed are simply not capable of handling what is going to happen and that his bank would be bracing themselves and keeping their balance sheet incredibly conservative. For a long time, this prediction was mocked by many people. Yes, stocks fell throughout 2022 and in the end, they fell by about 20% on average, but that wasn't quite the hurricane they were expecting. People hear the word crash and they want everything to fall apart Part all at once. Their memories are selective and they think that's how crashes happened in the past, even though that just isn't true. Every major bear market, recession and even depression, they have their bad days of course, but those usually only account for maybe 20% of the entire drop. Everything else happens slowly but surely, week by week and month by month, and that's exactly what happened during 2022. But then 2023 came around and all of a sudden everything shifted. In January, at the start of the year, many people thought all was well, inflation was over, the Fed was about to pivot, and the promised land, that soft landing, was finally upon us. But then inflation didn't fall by as much as we had thought and hoped and actually core inflation has stopped falling altogether and is continuing to rise at over 5% a year which means the Fed is not done with their rate hikes and the economy is not yet in the end zone. And then of course everything popped in March when the banking crisis began. We all know what happened here. Silvergate fell, then SVB, then Signature, then Credit Suisse First Republic has still yet to recover which is the same story we're seeing over at Charles Schwab and had the Fed not printed $300 billion overnight and flooded the banks with liquidity, many more banks would have collapsed. We saw what was really a full-on bailout, but we weren't allowed to call it a bailout because that might hurt Joe Biden's re-election prospects, and we were once again told that all was fine, but it isn't fine, and everyone with half a brain cell knows it. The problem that caused these banks to collapse, it still exists interest rates still need to go up, which means bond prices are going to keep going down. That means more unrealized losses for banks and when sentiment shakes or wanes, when people withdraw their cash, more bank runs will occur. It really is that simple. And on top of that, quantitative tightening is kicking off, pulling away $95 billion of liquidity every single month. And of course, the war in Ukraine is still waging, Western sanctions are still biting, and those aren't going to stop anytime soon either. Some banks have heightened their positions with interest rate hedges, but many banks have just not done enough. And frankly, their losses are just too big at this point to possibly profit their way out of this. The problem is not over. Nothing has fundamentally changed here. We've just seen a plaster applied to a sucking chest wound and we're expected to believe that all is well when it just isn't. And we're all aware that it isn't at this point and many are looking for ways to protect their investments as to not do so would just be foolish and more and more these days investors are looking in the direction of gold. It's an asset and store of value as old as time itself that has a particular strength when it comes to inflationary environments just like the period we currently find ourselves in and it's the favored store of wealth of many powerful organizations, most notably the Russian government. I know it sounds odd, but over a year ago, I released a video on this channel that identified a buildup of gold by the Russian government, and I used that to predict a coming black swan event. And a few months later, Russia invaded Ukraine and started 2022's chaos. 
The Russian government used gold as a war chest to keep the entire country afloat. And while things haven't gone perfectly for Russia, their economy has not yet collapsed as the world thought it would, and that's mostly thanks to gold. Now, millions of individuals are wondering whether they should be investing into gold as well, and that's where this video sponsor, Vaulted, comes in. Vaulted is the best way for investors to acquire physical gold with a great website and mobile app that makes it easier than it's ever been. They store and insure their one-to-one -one allocated gold in the Royal Canadian Mint and you can rest easy in the knowledge that you can request instant physical delivery of your gold holdings whenever or wherever you desire. Their prices are the best in the market because they store all of their gold at the manufacturer and they cut out all unnecessary middlemen, they don't charge any premium or spread when buying or selling you gold, and they are as transparent as possible, meaning there are absolutely no hidden fees. Again, that's vaulted in the link down below in the comments in the description, and of course, you can help support the channel as well. Now, as for Jamie Dimon, as I said, he was shaken by the economy last year, and this banking crisis is hardly seeming like good news for anyone at this point, and as someone with such a huge influence on the banking sector as a whole, let alone his own bank, many people looked to him to see what he was saying and doing to try and determine what was going to happen next. When asked if there are going to be more bank failures, all Diamond could say was, I don't know, in the public eye. So for once, he might actually be telling a little bit of the truth here. But when it came to speaking to his actual customers in a private letter sent out to his shareholders, Jamie was not so vague. The current crisis is not yet over, and even when it is behind us, there will be repercussions from it for years to come. If we have higher inflation for longer, the Fed may be forced to increase rates higher than people expect, despite the recent bank crisis. Quantitative tightening may have ongoing impacts that might, over time, be another force pushing longer-term rates higher than currently envisioned. This may occur even if we have a mild or not-so-mild recession, as we saw in the 1970s and 1980s. So really, he thinks that the banking crisis is not over and it's going to evolve into the future and we will still be feeling this crisis for years into the future. And if inflation remains higher for longer, which the most recent core CPI data that has come out after Diamond made this statement proves is going to happen, the Fed will be forced to continue to raise rates, which is what caused this crisis in the first place. And to top it all off, Diamond is even likening what we're going to see in the next few years to the stagflationary period of the 1970s and 80s, where markets were shot for almost two decades, where inflation was sky high for one and a half decades, and where people got poorer, not richer, year after year after year. And yet again, we're still expected to pretend everything is all right, that there are no problems and that this is just fear mongering coming from the head of JP Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon. Now, what this all really comes down to is the simple fact that these problems have emerged thanks to years of the SEC and other authorities being asleep behind the wheel. Regulations in our systems come after problems emerge as no one ever wants to preempt the crises as that would result in fewer dollars in their pockets. Lobbying is of course the main reason these loopholes are never closed in time and this is exactly what happened in March. Banks lobbied the authorities to allow these corrupt rules to stay in place, to allow these banks to continue to avoid booking their billions of dollars in losses so they can instead book billions in profits and give themselves huge bonuses and payouts. This is now all at risk of falling apart because these structural risks absolutely do exist and this is something that the banks just can't lobby their way out of. They can't change reality, they can't change the simple truth that they have lost billions of dollars under the infantile belief that US treasuries were truly a risk-free investment and that nothing could ever go wrong. Now we are left wondering when this final tipping point will come along and what it will finally be. What the form, the straw that breaks the camel's back will take because we know it's going to happen, we just don't know when or how. And if you're aware of these intrinsic truths as I am, if you're also trying to position yourself to profit from this market chaos or at the very least ensure you don't lose money, then investing into gold should be at the very least on your radar. Even if it isn't actually for you, you should be making sure that's the case and Vaulted is a brilliant and secure way to buy gold and you can get it delivered to you whenever or wherever you desire. Or if you just want to see how BlackRock is on the brink of collapse, then watch this video here.